We're live. Okay. Sergeant, can we start our recording? Thank you. Cloud is rolling. Backup is rolling. Sergeant Hope, with your opening, please. Oh, good morning, and welcome to today's New York City remote uh, hearing on health. At this time, with all council members and council member staff, please turn on your videos. Thank you. To minimize disruption, please place all electronic devices to vibrate or silent mode. Thank you. Chair Levine, you're ready to begin. Thank you so much, Sergeant. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mark Levine, City Council Member and Chair of the Council's Committee on Health. Today, we're going to be holding an important vote on several pieces of legislation, including two bills and two resolutions. I want to acknowledge that we're joined by fellow Health Committee members, Council Member Powers, Council Member Barron, Council Member Holden. I also see that we're joined by Council Member Miller. And I believe we have covered it for uh, those who are with us. And we'll cue Council Member Miller in a minute to give us some opening remarks. The first bill we're considering today is intro 2236A, of which I'm a proud sponsor. As we know, the vaccine rollout in our city has been significantly impacted by supply shortages, but also currently requires navigating dozens of websites and requires hours of time, technology skills, to work through those sites, and in many cases, the ability to speak English. Intro number 2236A will help create a better system. The bill will require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene or another agency designated by the mayor to develop and maintain a website which operates as a unified scheduling system for COVID-19 vaccinations for all cooperating vaccination locations and providers located in New York City. This will, be a this will be filterable by zip code and eligibility category. The website will also allow an eligible user to receive notifications when new vaccine appointments are available and to pre-register for such appointments. Next, we'll also be voting on intro 86-4A, sponsored by Speaker Johnson. This bill will expand the, the, the investigations that DOHMH is required to conduct under existing law whenever it is alerted about a child with an elevated blood lead level. DOHMH is another or another relevant city agency will be required to conduct investigations of specific locations where the child may have been exposed to lead. This bill will also create additional requirements for landlords with, with lead hazards and require DOHMH to provide information regarding special education services available for the Department of Education to parents or guardians of children under age 18 determined to have an elevated blood lead level. This bill will strengthen our existing laws in protecting children from lead poisoning incidents. And I was proud to sign on as a co-sponsor of this bill. Next, we'll be voting on two resolutions. Resolution 1535, sponsored by Council Member Miller, calls on the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation allowing local health departments to implement changes to improve the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. These changes include expanding eligibility to include those who live in the zip codes most impacted by COVID-19 and calling on the state to develop a publicly accessible real-time vaccination das dashboard which discloses vaccination data disaggregated by race, ethnicity, gender, age, sexual orientation, employment, and zip code. Finally, we'll be voting on resolution 1529A, which I'm pleased to sponsor. This resolution calls on the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation to protect New York State's safety net providers and special needs plans to eliminate the Medicaid pharmacy carve-out. The Medicaid pharmacy carve-out will cause extensive harm to community health centers safety net hospitals, and services for those living with HIV and AIDS. Given the disproportionate impact of COVID-19 on the most vulnerable communities and the providers that serve them, we must not just delay the carve out or try to supplement it with budgetary actions. We must eliminate this carve out. I wanna thank my colleagues from the Health Committee for being here. I see that we are also joined by Councilmember Alika Amprey Samuels, fellow Health Committee member, as well as Councilmember and Dr. Matthew Eugene. And I want to thank 
my, uh, the staff of the health committee who've done such incredible work on the bills and resolutes today, councils Harbani Ahuja and Sara Liss, policy analyst and Balk Balkan, and finance analyst Lauren Hunt for all their work in preparing for this hearing. And I would like to cue now our colleague, Councilmember Miller, excuse me, Councilmember Barron, did you have a comment you wanted to make? Okay. Councilmember Miller, I, as a co-sponsor, would like to cue you to say a few remarks, please. You set up this morning here, not not my usual. We got Thank you, you, Chair we got Levine, you loud and clear, Councilor. Uh, Thank you for for allowing me, uh, and 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 you and you so appropriately uh, express um, the mission of of the legislation. But this legislation itself is months in the making. Uh, myself, colleagues, and and particularly the members of the uh, Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus. Uh, have been advocating for a fair and equitable vaccine rollout long before the first dose was ever administered here in the city of New York. We saw what that first week rollout looked like. The first two weeks, the first three weeks was very inequitable. The fact of the matter is that nearly 25 30 to 35 percent of those first vaccinated came from outside of New York City and were not Black, Latino, or nor Asian. We call for <clears throat> a common sense approach to the vaccine's eligibility system including color-coded tiers and dashboards that would provide real-time updates on who was getting the vaccine and where. Today, our resolution has the support of the majority of the council, and we are one step closer to finally achieving vaccine equity to all. This is even more important now that we are expecting more vaccines thanks to the hard work of the, uh, the Biden administration. Their goal is to broadly expand eligibility by May. While we are certainly looking forward to eligibility expansion, the fact remains that hard to reach underserved populations are still struggling to gain access to the vaccine. Our office and other local community partners have been working diligently to help seniors and others set up vaccine appointments that are scarce and many seniors are especially not able to access them through the online process. We know what, what, we know what works and, and what doesn't. The pop-up vaccinations in churches, mosques, synagogues, and recreation centers are a must. And as we build, rebuild, and recover, it's vitally important that we continue to prioritize communities that was hardest hit by COVID-19, frontline and essential workers in industries uh, that were hardest hit, as well as communities of color. Most have been, most have equitable, robust access must have equitable and, and robust access to the vaccine as well as slowly regain a, as we slowly regain some semblance of normalcy here in our city. And resolution 1535 calls on the state and the governor to sign legislation that would allow health departments to implement changes to COVID-19 rollout, leading the way to tailored approach to accommodate the needs of the most vulnerable as we receive an increase in supply from the federal government and seek to achieve widespread inoculation. I wanna thank my colleagues for their overwhelming support. I'd also like to thank the Brooklyn Borough President for his partnership and leader, leadership uh, on this resolution. And of course, the members of the Black, Latino and Asian Caucus. And I'd like to thank, of course, Chair Levine for his partnership and, and, and support and, and not just crafting this, but making sure that it's being heard. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Miller. You are right on, and I'm grateful for your leadership and that of the entire BLAC in focusing on the horrible inequity of vaccination and this pandemic in general. So much more work to do in this resolution. Definitely pushes us in the right direct direction. So I think we're ready to go for a vote on these important bills and resos. So I'm gonna ask our committee clerk, uh, I think that's Billy Martin here with us today, to please call the roll. Good morning, William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on health. All items are coupled. Chair Levine. Vote aye on all. Eugene. We'll come back to council member Eugene. I, I council member Barron. Oh, thank I. you, council member. Right, Council Member Eugene, thank you. 
Yes, sir. Thank you. Councilmember Barron. Yes, good morning. Just permission to explain my vote. Please. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank the chair and all the members that are here for their support of this legislation. And I want to ask that I please be added to any that I may not already be noted on as a sponsor. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Absolutely. And Priest Samuel. Good morning. I vote aye on all. Holden. I vote aye on all. Powers. Aye on all. Thank you. One moment. Okay, by a vote of six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Uh, all items have been adopted by the committee. And Mr. Chair, there's one member outstanding. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't know if we're able to keep the vote open for a few minutes. Are we expecting uh, to be yeah, going by anyone? Chair, we're gonna hold the vote open for a couple of minutes. Great, okay. But thanks to all the committee members for being here. Excited to be passing this legislation. Thank you, Mr. Chair.
Good morning, Council Member Diaz. Welcome, Council Member Diaz. You ready to vote, Council Member? Pardon? Uh, are we ready, you ready to vote? I can yes. call you for the vote. Okay. On uh, continuation roll call committee on health, introduction H64A, 2236A, and resolutions 1529A and 1535, Council Member Dama Diaz. Yes. Thank you. Final vote now on all items. Committee on Health is seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative. No abstentions. Items are adopted. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Councilmember Diaz. And that's going to conclude our hearing of the Health Committee. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you.